so today on Star for Garage, we're detailing this Volvo XC90 that is completely trash. This was a dealer trade-in, and I'll kind of give you guys some more tips for yourself if you are trading your car later in this video, along with more detailing tips and tricks. But before we get into the rest of this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below, give it a like, and let's go ahead and get started. Canadian dollar. Now, like I mentioned, this was a dealer trade-in car. It showed up to the lot just like this, and the dealership gave about 400 bucks for the car because of the condition the car was in. The outside is not horrible, it's got a lot of miles, but with the inside being this trashed, if you trade in your car with it this dirty, the dealership has to bake in money on top for the amount of money it's gonna to take to get the car cleaned. And for a car this filthy, it's a lot of money. So if you are trading your own car, keeping your car clean, cleaning it before you take it into a dealership or a private party selling it, obviously a clean car is always gonna be worth more. Funny, in the last several videos I've watched people comment about me being barefoot inside of the car and if you look in the spot that I'm stepping in there was a floor mat here the carpet wasn't dirty like stained and covered in goo or anything like that and it was a spot I had just previously vacuumed so for me whenever I'm vacuuming a car if it's a clean spot I don't want to wear my shoes inside the car again to track additional dirt or stains inside the vehicle especially if it's just been clean so that's kind of why I take my shoes off when I'm walking inside the car get the vacuuming done up front so that way when I'm working on the rest of the car I don't have to worry about vacuuming later on again
a little backstory on this vehicle I found out from the dealership was that this car was used to drive across the country from New York to Washington State and back. And they had their two dogs in the car and a travel trailer they were pulling behind. So there was tons of dog hair inside the car. The car was just beat on essentially with all the dirt and debris inside of it and used just as a road trip car. Um, but once they got back to the East Coast, they traded it in to get additional car to drive back home. And that is why um, this car was traded in in the condition it was and not cleaned up prior. Now for all of you that do take care of your own car, any of the interior surfaces like the dashboard and the door panels, I use all purpose cleaner and then I use Fox Clean detailing brushes and microfiber towels, the pet hair brush. I have all of that stuff on my website foxclean.com that you guys should definitely go check out and pick up. I have a coupon code in the description box below for you guys that gives you 15% off on your first order. That way you guys can get all the tools and supplies you need to keep your car clean. So make sure after this video you go check out and pick up your detailing supplies. Now one tip for all of you that detail your own car, if you're using your detailing brushes and you're all purpose cleaner and you get that foam and that dirt kind of stuck in between all those cracks and crevices and seam lines, using your vacuum is a great thing to do after you wiped it all of it pretty much clean to suck out all of that fluid that gets stuck in there and then just wipe it one more time with a microfiber towel to get make sure you get all of that fluid removed and all that dirt out. Now one thing with detailing older cars, um, you can see here the tweeter actually popped off the door and I was a little bit um, 
upset because it wouldn't go back on initially. So I let it hang down and finished up the rest of the door panel. But by the end of this door panel, I removed some of the clips and removed and put them back in. So that way this thing clips back into place. But um, whenever I do detail these cars, there are things that go wrong. There are things that break. Um, I've never had fluid inside of a switch brake. That is something that is very rarely happens and I've never experienced myself in any of the details you see on my videos. All of those switches are weatherproofed and they're made to hit, get some sort of liquid on them to an extent. Obviously submerging them is a whole different story, but light liquid, you think about if your window's down and rain comes in, it gets on your door panel and switches all the time. Um, but for things that break, you know, sometimes there's cup holders that break off, this tweeter for instance, the plastic clips broke off. I have spares that I keep myself, but I always try to repair them, even if it's a component that was broken when it came back to me. I try to fix it if I can for the owner.
the previous clips I showed you guys for the floor mats and that rear carpet, I used the pressure washer to get those clean, but for the interior carpets, I just used my carpet cleaning solution, drill brush to get all that dirt and grime lifted for the surface, and then my extractor to extract out all that dirt and grime. Um, but once all of that carpet cleaning was done and those floor mats were done, I have a box fan. I have two of them that I set up and I hang my floor mats and then I have one that directs inside the vehicle to get those carpets dry. And typically for, for the cars that I detail, I turn those back to the owner or the, the customer uh, the day after. So that way it gives it at least a good solid eight hours to dry thoroughly. And the easiest way to do that is just to provide airflow over those components and it'll take care of the rest for you. Now these leather seats weren't torn or anything like that, but they were definitely worn out. This car had about 200,000 miles on it, but you can see on the base of this seat that there's this kind of a stretch mark spot, and that's where there was definitely some sort of cigarette or some sort of heat and object put onto it, so it kind of burned the leather. Um, so that part, obviously, I couldn't get cleaned or do anything about, but I'm just using my leather cleaner to clean the seats thoroughly with a drill brush in particular because it does help with speeding up the process, especially if it's coated with a lot of cigarette tar and smoke and dirt to get it removed from the surface and just wiping it clean with a microfiber towel. And then just to protect the leather, give it back some you know conditioning, um, I'm using my leather uh, conditioner to top coat it. Now a commonly missed thing, and I've done this in a couple videos, but I always try to detail the key fob and keyless remote if it has any dirt and grime on it. And for this one, just disassembling it is fairly easy. Just obviously, if you remember what it looks like in the beginning, to put it all back together the same, but remove the battery, remove the circuit board, any metal components from the inside, and then just use all-purpose cleaner to use your detailing brush to get all that dirt and grime removed.
Now this rear bench seat for some reason accumulated the most tog hair, um, so I used the vacuum to get as much of it out as I could. Um, this type of fabric here on the side, the fibers of the dog hair get stuck inside of it really, really bad. Um, but with the vacuum, got most of it out and then the pet hair brush removed all of it before moving on to the next panel. How I decorated the loose page Remember how I used to serve the plate Clean the food tray Working 8 to 4 from Tuesday Through the weekdays Hustle evenings at the stool Off Highway 92 In Haywood always running Just a few late Tucking a new game Back to the crib and I color in new ways If you thought this video was good, I can guarantee you this next one will top it. Make sure you watch this next one. It has maggots that literally are crawling out of the carpet as I'm vacuuming it. So now that this video is over, make sure you go watch this next one. Now I'm gonna put it right here on the screen for you to click so that way you guys can go watch it next. Mm -hmm.